Uh, greetings from Chicagoland. This is Munira from Chicago, and I am the CEO and founder of Kismet Ventures, which is my company. I am a John Maxwell certified coach and have a uh, Munira's Musing is my segment on YouTube. I am on the prowl for looking out for people who are adding value to other people and not getting recognized for it because they think it's their job. So I'm exposing them and promoting them on my segment. My guest today is Brad Milford. Hi, Brad. Hello, Manira. Hello, and thank you so much for doing this with me and for your time. I know that you are instilling a lot of value in other people and you do it in ways that people don't even know that you're doing it. So I want to, sh I want you to share that with me, but first tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. So hi, I'm Brad. Uh, I run a company called build brilliance, kind of an un unusual name, maybe not a great marketing name. Nobody knows what that means, but it's very, it's, I'm very passionate about it. I started it years ago when I went through a transformation, a life transformation. It took me 10 years to go through that 10th transformation. And what I found is, and what I believe is strongly, is that we all have a very unique brilliance inside of us. And I love, I'm very passionate about helping people, about serving others to find their genius zone or to find their, what I call their individual brilliance. So what do you do? How do you bring the brilliance out? Excellent question. I love that question. <laughs> um, have, so I like to ask this way, have you ever felt maybe that you, that you thought some one time in your life where you thought something something greater is out there and I just don't know how to tap into that. Or maybe you thought, you know, I'm in this corporate job, but I just don't connect with it. And I, I, I know I can engage more, but I'm just not sure how to tap into that, that thing. If you've ever felt that, that's what I help people do. So I do that in multiple ways. I'm a speaker, I'm a trainer, and I'm a coach. So I speak in public which I, I love to do. I'm very, very passionate about. I speak for corporations. I speak for um, individual organizations as well. And I train. I have a, a course, which I just, I just started. I just rolled out last month. It was a beta course. Uh, it's a 21-day challenge course that helps people to understand themselves better, get to know them themselves better, and to find their, their genius zone if you will, and to find their individual brilliance. Um, so I speak and I train and then I coach one-on-one -on -one as well with mostly entrepreneurs and executives. Great. So how do people know that they, I mean, you have this feeling, right? You have this feeling that I'm not connecting to my corporate job or I am tired of what, doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. so how is it they, um, they realize they need to do something more. Usually there's a pain point. So something, um, and that's, and that certainly was the catalyst for me. So usually there's a pain point in someone's life or they come to the realization that something's not right, but they just don't quite know what that is. Um, and that pain point will usually surface in some frustration or it, there'll be some catalyst. If something will present itself, um, so they become frustrated and a little um, some become angry with themselves. Their confidence seems to dip or drop a little bit. And that's typically when somebody might realize that something is not aligned in their life. So I don't like to sell alignment. That's a hard sell. But the reality is this. When our beliefs and our purposes and our values are all aligned and our beliefs are fueling our vision and we have a nice, clear, and beautiful, brilliant, vibrant vision in life. We are propelled forward. It gives us impetus. It gives us, it gives us drive and motivation. And so when those things aren't necessarily aligned, when they aren't, and it's so easy. Let me, let me share a story with you, if I may. Please. I was just traveling. So I just hit 15 states in the last 30 days. So I've been all over from Texas to Miami, all over 
um, the eastern states. Did you drive? I did. I did okay. because I went to meet. I went to some events and I went to meet some people along the way. As I was traveling, I passed by, and I didn't plan this, it was unplanned, but I passed by um, Pensacola, which was a training center for me. It was one of the first training centers I ever went through. I'm a Navy veteran, so I did a lot of um, search and rescue, uh, air crew training in the uh, Naval Air Station, Pensacola. When I was traveling by there, I decided to go by the front gate. It's the place I lived for months in training and I was reminded of a training session that I did it's actually in a movie too called the officer and a gentleman so I encourage people to watch that it's an old it's a, an old one but a great one it's what I was reminded actor. say it again my favorite actor is in it uh, Richard Gere yes <laughs> <laughs> an old an old one but great one yes he's a great actor I dig him too but I was reminded of a training that's in that that we went through um, about hypoxia Hypoxia is what can set in in the brain when you're up above 20,000 feet or 10,000 feet. And the unique thing is it's, it slips in so slowly. So we were in a ch what they call a hypoxia chamber where they introduced that to, so we could recognize that if we see it. It was fantastic training because one of the things that we were doing, they have a variety of tasks for us. One of the things that we were doing, we were looking at a deck of cards and we just call out the card. So ace of spades. King of Hearts, Nine of Clubs, which is a pretty easy task under normal conditions. But what happens as they begin to gradually introduce that hypoxic state is you begin to look at the cards, begin to look at the cards, and you think, your mind thinks that you're still calling them out. There's actually a very long space in between it, and, you're, and what happens is you struggle to figure it out. The reason why I say this story is, I was reminded how easy that many of us get off the path of where we started. So we started somewhere and we were super passionate about doing something or being someone or having something or just becoming something. And life has a tendency to kick us off the path a little bit unknowingly. And it sneaks up on some of us just unknowingly. And there's no fault. There's no, there's not, it's not usually a big thing. We have to have a tendency mentally. We have a tendency to protect ourselves and we have contingency plans for the big events. So when a big events, we know it, it's traumatic. We recognize that, but little tiny, small events that kick us off the path little by little tend to be a little, I'm going to call them hypoxic. And so I'm very passionate about helping people get packed on the right path, on the path they choose, on the path they want, and then draw back out that individual brilliance. Does that make sense? That makes a lot of sense. But, but so was this something that you were aware of before, but now it came into reality when you went to Pensacola? So I've been aware of this for, um, I've been on this path myself for 15 years. So if you're asking about maybe the catalyst to why, why I began this, is that is that what you're asking me? Yes. So for 40 years, 40 years, I'll be 50 soon um, in a year or so. For 40 years, roughly, I have been, I was traveling the country. So I was in the Navy. And then after the Navy, I built stadiums. I began to build companies. I began to build three corporations, multi-million dollar corporations in the stadium industry. And I made tons of money and I was on a great path or so I thought. I like to say we lean our ladder so on some wall. So I was climbing the ladder, the corporate ladder, if you will. But what I came to find in the end that I was traveling all over the world and I was building things, but I wasn't connecting with people. Oh, okay. I was taught to be very individual, individual, individualistic. I was taught I was, this was what my family modeled. It was what I was taught when I was young, I was taught to be, um, an individual and to be the best individual that I can be what I've come to find what I came to find at the top of the mountain when I looked over and I looked around I was pretty disappointed I had climbed that metaphorical mountain of success I had become successful money was not an issue but I looked around and I was pretty alone so in all the states I have been to 40 different states 42 different states and 19 different countries 
But for 40 years, I didn't really connect with people deeply. I only connected on a superficial level. When I realized that, um, I began to change. So I began a transformation, a huge transformation of 10 years, still transforming myself. So I guess it's longer than 10 years. But I didn't know where to start. I had no idea. I didn't have any role models in my life. I had been traveling all my life. I had no idea where to start. So I was super passionate about starting somewhere. The only place I knew was to turn to books. So I started there and that's when my life began to change. I began to learn about me. I began to grow very passionate about self-development and growth. And that began a transformation of a lifetime. I read a book a day for six years. I learned a lot about me. And then at that point, I came to a plateau. I, I wasn't able to raise what we call my leadership lid any farther. I got stuck. And I'm a pretty smart guy. I think I'm a fairly smart guy. Um, but I just could not figure it out. I was stuck. So I began to reach out for mentors, people who were ahead of me on the path that I wanted there's of something that I wanted to do, of someone I might like to model. And that began to actually level up my transformation. And then I find myself got stuck again. So I've been iterating each time with larger and better mentors throughout the process. So my, to answer your question, my big thing was when I realized I was in a place that I, I myself couldn't seem to break out of. That was a, transformation, a transformational moment for me, and that is what drives me to see that others don't stay in that place. Does that make sense? Yes. You bring a good point because we never know. You realize that you were stuck, right? I did. Some people who think they don't, think they're stuck they just think they're growing but they're not growing yes and my father you know he had he was a wise man sometimes. <laughs> yeah your father the wise man i love he it was. and he taught me a few lessons which never came to you know fruition or never understood until you know recently when things are coming into perspective for me that he would tell me that never never um a tree you know you can you can, if it's a bonsai tree, then you can allow it not to grow. Mm -hmm. And and what is it called? Stop their growth. And so, but there are trees that need to grow. So we are like trees. He always used to say, you just mm -hmm. have punch the knowledge up. You know, that's what he would say. Punch it up, read, read, read. And every Saturday when he went to the bank or he did his chores, we were shipped off to the library Nairobi <laughs> and we stayed there and we were to given you know instructions that at 12 or 5 you know when the library was going to close at 1 um, just at 12 um, 55 we were to come out and he would be there and but we spent hours and hours in libraries and we could read or we could take books home but we had to read and we had to explain to him what we read so I devoured books. But that's the thing is like most people don't read. Most people don't feel that they need to grow. Most people don't think that they need to grow. They just sit there, you know, mm -hmm. and it, it, it amazes me because I've seen so many of my friends and family members that spend hours in front of a TV and watch these shows. And, you know, it's like countless hours. And they discuss what is happening in this person's life and that person's life in the show. Mm -hmm. But they don't talk about self-growth. And when I bring these awareness to them, they're completely lost. Oh, why do I need to read a book? <laughs> <laughs> you know? And so I, I, I am at a loss how to help them. But if you can help me help them, that would be awesome. And I like the fact that you, your... Um, awareness in your life and now are helping other people mm -hmm. it's my soul it's my soul one thing so my desire my mission is to my vision 
my ultimate aim, I like to call it, way out there, is to transform two million people's lives. Didn't start there. That's a big mission. That's a big vision. I get it. Mission, yes. Um, but here's the thing I know. You do it one person at a time. That's how it works. You were When you were talking, I was reminded there's a quote um, by Mark Twain. I may, I may not have it perfect, but I'll have the gist of it. It's not what you don't know. It's what you know for sure that isn't so. And that's the space that I was in. It's a little play on words there, but that's the space I was in. And when we think we know something for sure, that may or may not be true. And that's the place that gets us stuck. When we think we know something for sure. And that's, the, that's typically the place that I work with people on one-on-one. -on -one. And when, when we do, when we, I'm gonna have the opportunity to work with people one-on-one, -on -one, we you usually start with beliefs. And people tend to anchor themselves in these beliefs. And sometimes those beliefs aren't true. And those are life-changing moments. When we, so people have beliefs about growth. I love what you were saying about the tree because it's so true. But the tree doesn't just grow on its own. There's a process. There's an incubation period. There's a gestation period. It needs nutrients. It needs water. And it needs nutrients in the soil to be able to grow. Now it does grow lat naturally and it'll extend itself to the fullest extent. But people are similar to that, but we also need nutrients. That's what the growth is about. So the books, the mentors, the things that keep us rooted, they keep us strong and not withering away. If you're not growing, you're dying is a common statement. If we want to, if we want to grow to the fullest extent and be vibrant and have flowers and fruit and be able to produce fruit, which is a great metaphor, then we must do, we must do things that cause us to, to, to absorb those nutrients and to grow to the fullest extent. And if not, then we begin to wither. Does that make sense? That makes a lot of sense. So I like the tree analogy. Yeah. It's, well, it came from a wise man. It did. <laughs> and he also told me that, you know, when you're growing a tree, don't uh, give it water all the time. That's true. You can overwater it too. Yeah, yep. because he wants the roots to grow and grow deep. Mm -hmm. Love that. Let me, let me jump in there. That's a great, I love that. That's so true. That's an, it's a great point. So you can overwater it and let's attribute that. There's a lot of people in the entrepreneurial um in the entrepreneurial community who talk about chasing shiny objects. So yeah. that's, that's one of the things that I see most often entrepreneurs do. So they're out grabbing this or they're out grabbing that, or they're out reaching for this because they're trying to make things easier, which makes sense. Their intent is pure. However, you can overwater there are when you're in the zone, when you're focused, when you have the exact nutrients that you need and you're stretching to the fullest extent, you don't need to grab all those other things. There's a tendency to overwater, chasing squirrels, some people call it. Um, and that's, that's uh, in our today, in today's internet age, that's huge. And that's one of the things in this 21 day course that I, that I try to get people to um, eliminate. I, my challenge is to have them focus on themselves, their audience themselves, their what, their why, and their how and to not chase shiny objects or not overwater themselves. I love that analogy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and that was one of me because as a entrepreneur and starting my business, we hear people using this software, this app and mm -hmm. this, and it's like, I'm paying for this. And when you start to tell it, it becomes expensive. So as an entrepreneur, that's something that you don't have is a large budget one. Mm -hmm. So which ones do you choose? So I got to a point where I'm going to find things for, or I don't need it at all at this point. I'm I love it. aware of things that are going to come. But, you know, so the shiny object syndrome is very, very You have to be aware of it and say, I don't need that right now. Yeah, there's a thing in the brain that causes us to, I don't want to be too technical <laughs> on a lighthearted interview, but that causes us to fear not having something. It's a part of the brain that says, you know, we must have this. And actually marketing 
play on that. They play on that a lot. So there's something called the fear of loss in sales. Um, you, I'm sure everyone that sees this has, uh, has heard it. Oh, you have to have it now or last. It's a one time offer or, <laughs> you know, it's it, the price is going to raise and that's all plays on fear of loss. But the thing is, what I've found is this. I see a lot of people out there who have great intent. Their intent is pure. It's from the heart. They want to give and they want to serve, which is a beautiful place to be as an entrepreneur. Unfortunately, I, the challenge I see most often is that, and this is something that I learned from the stadiums when I built stadiums all over the country, is that foundation first. Yes. foundation first when you build a foundation we can use the tree metaphor for that as well i like the builder metaphor it works for me since i was i worked from blueprints for so long and we would look at the blueprint and obviously we had to build from the ground first you 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 excavate a hole and you pour a concrete foundation you pour a foundation if you don't have the foundation right nothing that you build upon it no level that you build upon is is aligned and when you get to the end product no matter what you're building a building a stadium whatever it is if those pieces don't align your building will fail <laughs> and nobody wants that tower of pizza right that's right that's a good analogy i like that don't build the tower of pizza there's only one we only need one of those <laughs> And, you know, so they did, you know, and in historical, now they're, they're coming up with information that they did miss a few little foundational things that mm -hmm. that's causing it to lean over, you know, and so exactly. we don't want that. But that's a good analogy because we, as people, we need to ground ourselves first. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's where it's all, that's what... I believe finding your individual brilliance is all about when someone finds their inner core, their inner genius, their inner brilliance, when they find it, it's because it's not out there. It's not out there. I get so passionate about this. I'll try to tone it down a little bit, but it's not out. It's not out there. What you want to do or what you want to have is not the answer to your solution. It's not going to give you happiness. I know this for sure. I climbed that mountain. I did all the, hard stuff, the grinding that people talk about. I did that. It's not in that. Growing is a process, but when you find yourself, when you find your inner core, your yoke as it's called, when you find your inner self, your inner individual uniqueness, everything else becomes clear. You will find peace. You will find freedom and you will find confidence in who you are and be able to, um, to be able to radiate. Again, I'm trying not to be too technical, but be able to radiate your brilliance into the world in a way that no one else can. And when you find that thing, everybody has that thing. You can call it purpose if you want. Um, but even people that say it pains me to hear people say, "I'm trying to find my purpose." Your purpose is not out there. Your purpose is in here. That's where the foundation begins. When a person finds that and when they realize that, their whole life begins to change and every step and every door begins to open in a new way. Does that make sense? That does make sense. So you're tying your brilliance and your radiance into one thing. Yes. And I think where you're going from this, and maybe I'm wrong, but I'll share it anyways because you know, a diamond to a graphite, right? And it is the hardest substance on earth, but it has to go through a lot of pressure. Yes. Then bring out the brilliance in it. Love it. Yep. I use that metaphor a lot. In fact, my coaching program is not a coach out of the box program. So I know a lot of people who have gone through a training and they get a certificate and they, you know, they use that coaching for that. My coaching is actually different. It's based on, it's based on the years of transformation I went through, and it's based on the brilliant diamond. So it's based on the fifty-eight facets. Many people know about the fifty-seven facets of a brilliant diamond, but there's one facet that a lot of people don't know about. There's one extra cut at the bottom of a diamond called the culet, C-U-L-E-T, and I attribute that to purpose. 
the people that have that cut, the people who have, understand their purpose, their brilliance, they let a lot of more light in and a lot more light out as it filters in. Light is energy. Energy is emotion. And they're able to let a lot more of that in. You see the metaphor now and how that works in life. So it's based on the 58 facets of a diamond. So yes, that speaks to me brilliantly. <laughs> Thank you. I like diamonds. <laughs> That's the a girl's best friend, isn't it? Uh, no. No, no. <laughs> no. But, you know, I like diamonds. Well, so, you know, I have always been fascinated with them. But that's another story. Me too. Me too. <laughs> and so, you know, and I, and I think everybody out there, everybody in this life has, has gone through some kind of pressure. And I think everybody is unique enough to be a diamond within themselves. I have a friend who keeps talking and say, you are a diamond. She tells everybody, you are a diamond. You don't know how unique you are. Yeah. And it's like, if I told her, I, I told her the other day, I said, you know, don't tell me I'm a diamond because my husband wouldn't buy me any. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I, I love the metaphor of diamonds. It's so true. So the more pressure you are formed under, the more uniqueness you bring. There's a fascinating... A uh, thing that I'll, I'll I'll offer you about diamonds. So every diamond is unique, and they all have some type of uh, scratches inside them, deep inside. Some type of uh, some of them have small cracks and different things. They're called inclusions. So we all have what we may see as faults, or we see ourselves in a, in one way, and people see us in another way. If we called them inclusions, it would be such more a beautiful way to put that because they're not really faults. They're just part of the aggregate that makes us who we are as unique individuals. They're really just inclusions in our life. But we need those, right? We need these we do. It's part of make, what makes us who we are. That's There's another thing. We were talking about growth. Another one of my favorite quotes. Um, it's by me. Okay. <laughs> who you are is greater than where you are. And the reason why I like that statement so much is that we do form under pressure and we do grow. And even the people who begin to start to grow like myself and go through transformation and then another transformation and then another transformation and begin to continue to transform. The fascinating thing is we can continue to do this. So when people talk about I'm up leveling or I'm leveling up because I've heard from multiple people, I don't know what that means. I hear that, but what is that? Well, that's a part of that. So who you are is greater than where you are, meaning where you are right now currently in your life. So even if you've begun that transformation, you can continue to level up and level up again and level up again in the way that you choose, not you as a person in the air, but you in general speaking for everyone. So we can begin to grow and then we can continue to grow and outstretch, we'll use your, your tree metaphor and stretch out and begin to produce fruit and then begin to produce a better yield and better fruit. So there's always a way who you are is greater than where you are. There's always a space for additional growth. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. It's my pleasure. I love the brilliance. I love the growth analogy and the tree analogy. And, you know, I think everybody that hears this has to take away from what you have to share. So how do they get involved in the 21 day brilliance program? Yeah, I love it. So I want to just scroll back for three seconds when you said that you love it. I want to tell you something that probably nobody's ever told you on a one-on-one -on -one interview. I love you, Manera. You're a beautiful person and you have an individual brilliance. So I'm happy to share my stuff, but I wanted to share that with you. Thank you so much. You are brilliant. So people can reach me from my business page. It's um, Build Brilliance. They can reach me on my personal page. It's Brad Milford, M-I-L-F-O-R-D. Or I have a group, which you are, I'm an honor to have you as part of the group, the High Achievers Network. It's a fantastic group since I'm able to plug it because I don't usually like doing that too much. But it's a fantastic group of people that are, in various positions. So it's not just people who are way up here, but we also have people just starting on the path and people in between. And wow, the collaboration and the, it's just a place where people are lifting one another up. So I love it. And then I also have um, 
my business page, buildbrilliance.net, or my website, which is a work in progress. <laughs> Everybody is, everything is these days with technology and all the new things that are coming out. We always want to tweak it and make it very fine. But you know what? Everything is a work of progress. And like you said, we, in order to grow, we have to be a work of progress, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my website is a tree. It's growing. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Thank you so much, Fred. I really appreciate your time. I'm honored to have you on my on my segment, and I am sure that people are taking away a lot of golden nuggets that you have here. And have a good day. Thanks. Dare to be brilliant. Thanks, Manera. Pleasure bye -bye. is mine. All right. Bye bye.